What's up, guys? It's Magnus back with another commentary. Uh, here we're going to be taking a look at Warrior Mage uh, Holy Paladin versus Rhett Windwalker Disc Priest. Uh, PP talents I'm going to be running here are Sharpen Blade. Uh, even though it's a Disc Priest, and Disc Priests are primarily like you know shield-based healers at the moment, um, you know they do have those big radiances at times. But it's really just primarily to deal with the Rhett off healing. Uh, if you can get uh, really good Sharpens out of CC and really stop those wogs, you're going to shut down the ret a lot. And also, like, the ret is kind of a viable kill target, but I'll get into that in a second. Uh, PP trinkets I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using the badge. Uh, I have the honor version level of the badge. Uh, lines up perfectly with my, sp with my spear. Every one minute, we're going to have really good goes as Warrior Mage, uh, Paladin. Uh, whenever we line up our spear with our big go with Pally Hodge, Blind, uh, those are a minute cooldown. So whenever you really line those up, that's whenever you can get a lot of damage rolling. Um, looking at this matchup, um, we've played some games into it. Uh, hitting Windwalker just feels better. Uh, whenever you don't hit Windwalker, the Windwalker is actually able to just be way too offensive on your mage. Even with the Tree and Wood mages with Holy Paladins on their team, Windwalker just does so much damage that you really just have to hit them and punish them. Um, I'm not sure if I covered PP talents here. I'm going to be playing One Minute Rally and Disarm. The Disarm is to really just shut down the Rat. And the rally is to just have a cooldown to trade out of, as we come out of leg sweep. Like image leg sweep goes from windwalkers are going to be super hard to deal with. Uh, even though we do have a lot of cooldowns to rotate th to rotate through, um, it just gives us a little bit extra to work with. Starting the game off here, uh, I'm in battle. I'm not really worried about being a kill target. I want to start off on the windwalker instantly. You can see that I just walk into him. So this is a th this is a thing that I see a lot of people do wrong is they'll just walk into a game and they'll just charge instantly. And I don't think charging instantly is good versus these high mobility classes because you just walk into them and charge them and they didn't use anything. He still has port, he still has his rolls, he still has his flying serpent kick, he still has tiger's list, he has all these ways to get away from you. And then you've just used your primary gap closer. Instead, I like to just walk into them, uh, try and overpower, get a stack of overpower down while I have no rage, and then hamstring. Uh, it's pretty good to use at least one stack of overpower always before you use a lot of rage because as you get tactician procs, um, you know, you're going to obviously be spinning your rage, and then you'll be able to, like, generate more uh, overpower procs if you do get those tactician procs. And it just makes Warrior feel really fluid whenever you play like that. So, all in all, uh, we just start off here. I'm trying to slow the ret. You can see that I just, like, I avatar, actually. Uh, we want to do our go. So, pre avataring this, I want to get a slow on the ret because I don't want the ret to be able to just run at my Holy Paladin. And you can see that my mage is casting sheep, right? So my mage is going to want to sheep up uh, one of these DPS and then blink through and then go for more CC. So he wants to sheep the ret. And then whenever he sheeps the ret is whenever we want to do our go. So whenever he sheeps, it was our, I'm like, okay, it's time to rock, right? I'm going to want to bolt our kill target as my paladin comes in. And then my paladin's going to want to hodge blind uh, the priest or a hodge sheep, whatever our setup uh, may be. So the priest walks out. You can see the priest walks out. His hands light up. He dispels his ret. He's on global, so we blink through, and we get the full sheep. Uh, I th try and throw my spear at um, Chun here, and I miss. Kind of unlucky, you'll have that. I'm kind of old, you know, I'm getting up there in age. My wrist hurts sometimes when I wake up, things like that. So, um, not the most lucky situation for us here, but still, we get karma, and we get... Um, and we get wall. So we get karma, we get wall, we get wings. That was our our offensive uh, push, right? So the second that I see wings, I see karma, I see all these buttons, my, my mage gets hodged. I'm going to want to intervene him, have an ignore paint up, and go D stance, right? Uh, I'm not in D stance yet, but I'm going to want to go. Okay, so because I intervened him there, my mage is able to just, like, you know, live this opener. Uh, I'm not sure if my ignore paint just soaked it up, if they just didn't really press any buttons. My mage DBs gets away, and then I'm just kind of over here getting fisted. Um, <laughs> you know, we're all adults here, though. And, uh, yeah, so now now that they're actually connecting with Wing, he's used his fist. Uh, you know, I have ignore pains, but I want to sit D stance now. I, I'm not really looking to do much more damage here. We're playing a setup-based comp. So, you know, it's not bad to have these lulls in your damage where you're in D stance. So, I'm in D stance, having no pain on me. They know that they're not going to kill me. We've got, uh, we got paints up in that go as well. So, whenever the pally did his hodge blind, we, get, we still get paints up because the go is uh, extended. But now we end up in this scenario where we have to wait a little bit because you can see that the priest used thought steal. So whenever the priest used thought steal, we can't go for any more sheeps. Even though the guy's off sheep BR completely, we can't, well not off completely, we we got a ring at some point there uh, out of the blind, I think. That's what he trinketed. But um, we're not going to be able to go for any sheeps out of this. So now we're just kind of waiting. It's just like a waiting game, you know, waiting on bolt is what, what a lot of your goes end up being as this comp 
is you're bolting the kill target as you're going for sheeps. So like, for example, my mage will sheep the ret and then go for the sheep on the priest as I stormbolt this guy. As I stormbolt the windwalker, because we're trying to kill the windwalker. So he only has to deal with one interrupt here. If the ret interrupts um, the first sheep in, you know, four seconds, he's going to be able to go for another sheep on the ret. As he gets a sheep on the ret, then he's going to go for a sheep on the priest as I stun this guy, right? So the second that I see those, I'm going to want to try and line them up. That's how you kind of structure your setups as warrior mage. There's obviously a little bit of a downtime. You know, whenever you play with a mage, it's primarily a setup-based comp. So everything is based around DRs. Again, we're just like trying to do as much damage as we can here, though. Like this is image, tiger. You know, whenever whenever Windwalker summoned Tony the tiger, it, it's scary time, right? So um, this is one of those scenarios where instead of um, bolting the fist, right, I'm going to leap. He actually canceled the fist, right? Um, my mage communicates to me that thought steals over. You know, so whenever thought steals over, we can go for the sheep. So uh, he canceled the fist. If he didn't cancel the fist, the fear would have actually hit him uh, and maybe stopped it. It actually didn't hit him at all, but he, he canceled it, so it didn't matter. It didn't matter. So what we do here is he roots up the the rat, and then we go for sheep out of the fear because he already trinketed. Now he has no undead, and now this is another one of our good goes. So um, I get robbed out here. They pre he pre ran uh, the go. He pre counted the go. So we're just gonna hit the red here. It's fine. We're we're getting cooldowns throughout the game. This guy procs the wings, hodges me, not a big deal. Just lines on it. He's trying to help up his guy. We're still getting full sheeps. Uh, this guy's not rally, so these are sitting. I can still get over here and do some damage, but I need to be careful. I don't have a trinket, so I don't want to get caught back here. Uh, they did already put me on stun DR, but again, I'm not really worried about it. It's not Tony the Tiger. You know, this guy hasn't, you know, prayed today, so he didn't get another wings proc. We're good to go. So, um, he actually DBs the fist. Uh, and it's really good to do that, obviously. Just to stop the fist, but it's also good to just save DB for going for sheeps as well. So now that they're kind of stacked here, they sweep us. I get swept half with him, and then I'm just gonna try to want to. I want to intervene him so he can go for CC. But now that they're stacked, um, because we did get a good CS here, and this guy's this guy's uh, DR for sheep is gonna end as his lockout ends as well. So they end cap. They want to do a go on us. So I intervene so that we can get ours, right? Because whenever I intervene. Um, I'm, I'm intervening for damage, but I'm also intervening so that my mage knows that he can cast whatever he wants to cast. So if he wants to cast a sheep on anybody in the game, he can cast it, and while he's on top of me, he's not going to get kicked. So this is a good time for us to do a spear go. They try and run it, but obviously they just get sucked back. Um, tries gripping it, still gets get sucked back. So he PIs to try and catch up on heals. We get a bop here, really good. And then we get the bop. So we get the bop. We rotated through. We got the bubble here as well. So he bubbled to bop his um, walker, and we get the sheep. I'm playing with a mage, so he's just going to be able to take that right off, right? But uh, big wog here from the ret. The only the only sad part for me here is that the wog, uh, the word of glory wouldn't have been as big, but obviously my bladestorm debuff falls uh, during the um, during the bop. So he gets a massive wog and actually saves him. So, you know, it's still our go. We're still, I think we get more CC out of this. We should. I'm still just on this guy. He ports, but he's still in line of me. Um, I turn, I angle my character. So you can see how I'm angling my character. Uh, if he had actually crackled me back, as I see him start channeling the crackle, you can see that I slightly turn my camera and slightly angle it so that if he knocks me back, it'll knock me right into the pillar so that he doesn't actually get away from me. I still have mobility. Uh, we just DB. We're going for more CC here. Um, I don't have a bolt yet, but, you know, we have really good pressure in this game. So they're trying to do a setup on us. Uh, they hodge up a paladin. I really want to try and intervene my mage here. I don't have it quite yet, but I have to walk around this ring or I won't be able to get there at all. So here... Um, we get sacked for free. I think he's trying to sack the sheep on himself, but I, I don't entirely agree with that. I think they should have saved sack for more defensive uh, usage because we're almost off DR, or they're almost off DR, so I think he should have 100% saved that. But anyway, like our next go is going to be really big. So they're stacked right now, and I'm just doing damage. Um, if we get any CS, if we do anything to them, it's like completely fine. But whenever teams stack like this, uh, also I forgot to mention at the beginning of the game, I am playing on Hinged here because it is a double melee team. I don't really need the Reflect. Uh, legendary versus this, it's a double melee. The only thing I could ever reflect is like a mind games here, but there's no spammable CC from this team, so we don't have to worry about mind games reflects because we can just instantly dispel them. So they go for our mind games. We get the karma here, and I just break it instantly because I am playing on hinge. So during my blaze from duration, I break the karma. So we go for a sheep, we broke the karma. Paladin has no bubble, he already used his bop. They have no trinkets. My storm bolts up, so you can see I, th I throw the bolt, he gets away. Uh, I don't have to worry about overpowers now, even if I want to press them. Um, because he's away from his teammates. So we get our CC chain there. If they had sack and had saved it better, maybe he would have lasted a little bit longer. 
But yeah, it's just kind of how the game structures itself. Uh, you know, you, you kind of do everything based around your teammates and based around your mage to keep your mage offensive, uh, to defend your mage. Uh, these teams really can't punish you if you use your defense as well. But you also have to make sure that like your setups are very clean. But you also have to make sure that you're turning theirs as well. 